Welcome to That Entrepreneur Life, a podcast about entrepreneurship that takes you from idea to launch and beyond. Beyond. Each week, your hosts, Andrew Lees and Clint McPherson, discuss different business topics aimed at adding value to any entrepreneur's journey. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of The Entrepreneur Life. I'm Clint McPherson, and in today's episode, I'll be flying solo. This is my co-host, Andrew Lees, is currently on a little vacation down in Florida, which uh, must be nice, right? But as always, I'm excited to be here. And with that said, let's go ahead and kick this thing off by welcoming our special guest today, Chris Bella, to the show. How you doing, brother? Doing great. Doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Clint. No doubt, man. It's definitely and truly an honor, um, one, to be on your podcast recently, and two, to bring you on our podcast and, ju- and just bounce back and forth, man, because when it comes down to it, we need each other, right? We, we I do. don't think humans understand how important it is to have each other in, in any way, man. We have to have that human connection, that human feeling, and also those touch points and also building friendships. Um, talking business, whatever your niche is at the time, you know, it's very interesting to pull golden nuggets out of any conversation that you can. But like I said, man, it's an honor to have you on the show. And before we actually dive deeper into our conversation today on, on that entrepreneurial life, can you quickly share with our audience who you are and what you're all about, my man? For sure, for sure. And just like we talked about before he record, I'm not going to give you a 30 minute version. I'll give you like a two minute version. (laughs) (laughs) But basically, I tell people that my story really starts after I graduated from college. I went to oil and gas company. You know, I'm from Houston, Texas. And so there's a lot of those companies out here. Yeah. Thought that was my path. Thought that was my dream job. You know, I was so excited. I remember I got it. But it took a couple of years before I started to realize, like, you know, is it just me? Is something wrong with me? I'm not interested in this. Like, I don't want to come to work. I'm falling asleep in meetings. Like I had no engagement, right? You know, talking about tools or like orders that are missing that we got to follow up with the suppliers, you know, daily. I'm just like, man, this isn't very fulfilling, you know? Like, I don't care about the little parts that we need to manufacture this tool. It's just not interesting. And so I started listening to podcasts. I mean, I had I had listened to music every single day, like 500 times each, right? Each song. And I started to listen to podcasts and like anyone listening to this, once you start listening, man, you are addicted, right? Podcasts, sure. audio books, reading books. And basically I quit my job uh, without really having a full plan. I had an idea that I was working on with a friend. I, I had money at the time too, because I had the job and I had no living expenses really, um, other than like rent or actually I had bought a house before I quit the job. Right. Threw myself into entrepreneurship, thought I was going to be successful You know, I'm like, I'm smart. I have a college degree. I'm going to figure this out super fast. Um, Come to find out that it was a lot more difficult. It took a lot more time and money than I expected to be successful, quote unquote. I'm using air quotes. Yeah. Um, And I actually fumbled my way through several ideas before I fell into real estate, where I stuck with it long enough to learn the ropes, to find mentors, and to actually attain uh, a level of success that I was that I was looking for. And of course, I've raised the bar since then. But that's the quick version of who I am and what I'm up to. My real estate. Uh, agent and investor in Houston, Texas. And I have a podcast as well, which it was great having you on my show too, bro. Yeah, man. And so like you just mentioned, right? You're a real estate expert, I believe. Like when you come down to it, if you're out there slinging real estate, you're out there investing in real estate, you have to have some kind of expertise in that to actually not get burned at the end of the day to continue to make that something that can build wealth for you in the future, right? Exactly. Um, and, and learning the ins and outs of that. And you just mentioned, right? Being a host of a top 100 uh, business podcast, which you didn't say, but I wanted to drop that in there for you, right? Thank you. Thank you. In, in the Entrepreneur <laughs> Motivation Podcast, and I had a ball being on there, man, and really chatting with you, really first time us sitting down and talking. But like you just mentioned, right? You kind of mentioned how your journey began and and how you came to where you are today. But like, it, is that really where your entrepreneurial journey, your like entrepreneurial spirit started? Was it something that happened before, you know, all of this, before you stumbled into real estate? Before you like started your podcast, I mean, was there something else that brought you to where you were or was it just what you just mentioned, my man? Man, I love that question because it is kind of interesting to hear the foundational pieces of how entrepreneurs got started. And now that I think back on it, I mean, I I had a friend and I like in my neighborhood, we used to do magic shows and like charge little kids like we were like 12, man. I got pictures (laughs) and my parents got like videos and stuff of this. 
of us doing a magic show with like 20 kids there. And I think my parents basically probably paid for the other kids because like we asked for a dollar and we made like 20 bucks. But we had the insight or the foresight, I guess is the right word, to offer a garage summer sale right after the magic show. And so while we had everyone there, we're like, hey, here's some toys. Here's some like Pokemon cards or whatever you guys want to buy them. And man, we didn't really make any money like at all, but we had the idea there, right? I remember another thing that we did, the same friend and I, and he's actually the same friend that I tried the idea with in uh, 2017. We've been friends for a long time, childhood okay. friends. He's very entrepreneurial. We actually just hung out this past weekend as well. And um, we would we made like Pokemon cheat codes, man, like 30 pages. You just copy yes. and paste the cheat codes for like, <laughs> red blue and yellow version on the game boy of the pokemon game All right and we printed that out in color it probably costed more money to print than we even sold it for <laughs> but that's kind of how it started and of course shows like shark tank and podcasts out there about startups for that's sure. what really got me you know got me thinking again of like you know everyone who's successful financially that i look up to usually owned their own business or was like a ceo at a company that they had worked their way up for 30 years. Right. Yeah. So I started to to put the pieces together that, you know, that person's going on vacation like three times a year and they're getting to fly on a jet and they have a lot of cool toys and cars and freedom. Right. Versus the people that are high up in the company, they seem stressed. They're always at work all the time. Exactly. They're here before I get in. They're here after I leave. So it didn't take long to put two and two together that I wanted to uh, be, become part of that entrepreneur life. Right. Oh man, no, I love that. I love how, again, there's always a, like that seed somewhere along the route, right? Like, like planted. Yeah, yes. exactly. And, and I saw like just hearing your initial like introduction of yourself, I was like, you know, there's typically something else, right? And it, it might have been just that you might have been laying it out there, but typically the entrepreneurial spirit, man, you can realize it in some form, some way, in some kind of fashion along your journey. That you're like, you know what? Like now that I'm actually thinking about it, I did do it when I was like this magic show idea. Did we make any money? No, but it, we had fun doing it. And it was we something did. again that ignited the fire inside of you to like, and it's almost like, have you ever, like you were a kid, right? We all been there to where we have an artistic side, right? Like what, what my kids, my four year old, my eight year old, they're constantly drawing, they're constantly coloring. You know, and in, 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 in their mind, you know, it's like the Vincent Van Gogh piece, right? But it's that artistic ability that I think like as we get older, we kind of move away from. Like we don't continue to, to, um, that seed that was planted in us. We all have a creative side. We can all think of something. We can all think of a way to make money. We all have a, a some type of spirit within us to where we can be like, okay, look at, man. You know, if I was to put my, put my finger on the pulse, like this is where it started. And so I love that story, man. I mean, look, I was I was like, let's go. And you were sitting there saying, you know, like the Pokemon, like whatever magic you're interested show, yeah. in, man. Right. You loved it at that time. So you're like, yeah. hey, magic is great. It's fun. Kids love it. I'm a kid. Let's make it happen. And and that's that's the stories we're trying to tell and trying to like when people are listening to the show, like, oh, man, that. You know, whether it's cute, whether whether it's something that like I can relate to that because I've been there. Mm -hmm. That's the type of stuff we're we're trying to pull out, man. I love that you brought that up. Yeah, man. Thank you for diving in deeper there, because, yeah, most of the time we just gloss over and I'm like, well, you know, I just came across the podcast. But really, I had that idea, the freedom, you know, entrepreneurship is freedom. Basically, you'd rather work 80 hours a week for yourself than you would work 40 hours for someone else. That's just how it is. Right. So. That is why I had to pursue that path of like having no boss, being able to create my own schedule, go on trips and all of that stuff. So, yeah, thank you for diving in with that. No, 100 percent. And so with that said, man, what is it what is it about doing what you do on a daily basis currently that gets you really fired up? What keeps you moving during the day when you roll out of bed that that gets you going, man? And and did you always know? Right. That you wanted to focus on real estate. I'm not saying when you were a kid, but like as you were getting right. older, did you really know that you wanted to focus on real estate and helping entrepreneurs? Yeah. So real estate's one of those things. I mean, we all I think we've all heard statistics at some point or another of like 90 percent or 98 percent. I forget the exact one, but like in the 90s, um, the 90 percentile, that is the amount of wealthy people that acquired it through real estate, whether that's commercial or investing in properties or, you know, having 
apartment complexes. I just kind of always heard real estate was the thing. Everyone, you know, they're not making more land like the, the um, at least on Earth, maybe on other planets as we get there. But like <laughs> right. right now, you can either build up or build out. And so land becomes more precious. And if you buy in a certain area, you hold the properties for 20 years. I mean, more people are going to keep moving there, most likely. And the values are going to go up. And so I kind of had that seed. Like you mentioned earlier, there was a seed planted in my mind at some point. Uh, maybe I heard about it or in high school, someone gave me the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I don't even think I read it for a few years. It stayed on the shelf. I wasn't ready. You know, I was like 17 going to college. Um, I was like, hey, I, I can read this later. I got other school stuff I got to read now and test to take. But then I read that book again and I'm like, oh, this makes so much sense. If anyone out there hasn't read it, I highly recommend it. It's like a paradigm shifter for you in your mind. But that kind of led me to believe that the real estate was the thing. And of course, I delayed it some more, right? I worked in oil and gas for three and a half years. They sent me off. I worked in Dubai for six months and all this kind of stuff. So it always seemed like something that was almost out of reach because like, oh, I got a job and yeah, sure. I'll buy a house eventually, but I'm about to go to Dubai. So like, why would I buy a house? You know, so I was renting and it wasn't until I got back and got settled from Dubai. I was like back in Houston. Okay. I got a job. I got 60 grand saved up. Like, let me buy a house before I quit this job because I'm not going to get lending very easily. Right. Um, and, and so it just started like the seed was planted and then I started asking questions and a friend came and talked to me about buying this certain property in Houston. And that was my start, man. You know, I, I got, I got to start there. And of course, again, I got sidetracked, right? I quit. I tried a bunch of other things. I didn't even end up in real estate until like 2018. Um, so I've been in it for about three years now, but I stayed consistent. But I always knew in the back of my mind, like real estate, something I'd like to do. I just never knew how to do it. You need money for it. I didn't have money, right? At least you, you think you need money until you figure out about stuff like wholesaling. Um, I had all the excuses, I guess, of why I couldn't do it, you know? No, I'm, Chris, man, I can relate so much to that, man. And, and it's almost like the shiny object syndrome or the clutter. Exactly, man. The, the interference. Exactly. The things that just get in our way. And it almost seems like the things that you're meant to do, it's not going to always be easy, man. Things things happen for a reason. Doors open because to, to allow you to know that you're doing the right thing at the right time. But also doors can close in front of you. Or, or obstacles placed in front of you that really, again, like takes your attention away from what you truly want. Exactly. Um, and sometimes we don't even realize that, man. And then we get so lost up in the minutia of everything that it's really something that could be very stressful, a burden on us. And, and a lot of people don't know how to really navigate the water sometimes because it might be the first time they've really faced adversity because all the doors just opened up. Everything was aligned and everything was all that if it's meant to be, it's going to be. And I believe that, but I'm also a firm believer of if it's going to be, man, you got to make it happen. You exactly. know what I'm saying? You're not going to exactly. be able to sit on your ass and just, and just think Hope that it happens. Exactly, <laughs> man. It's like the same, the field of dreams, right? They built it and they're going to come. Come on, man. That's not going to happen. That's not realistic. I mean, if, if it's in demand and you build it, yes, they will come. Right. And, and real estate is something that we're so we have so much of a population that keeps expanding and keeps growing. We need more, you know, land to to build stuff on and, and real estate, brother, and, and people needing a place to live. Right. Yeah. That's not going. That's anywhere. the most basic need. Yeah. We exactly. need food, water and shelter, man. It's like one of the things on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But one thing that you said there that I wanted to add to, I mean, it's, it's absolutely true that opportunities and doors may open, but if you're not ready, you're not going to step through them and they're going to close. So I love the quote that says, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. You have to be re ready to go. And when that opportunity presents itself, you jump on it and you can actually execute on it effectively. Nah, man, I agree 100%. I love that. I love how, you, how you're able to connect that. So, man, as entrepreneurs, and I, I was looking at your website, um, chrisbello.com, and just trying to, trying to just really, even after talking to you, man, I wanted to know what you're about heading into this head into this podcast episode. And as individuals and as entrepreneurs, we all want more out of life, right? I mean, and that's something I know you touch on, on on your website, but we all want to do more. We all want to be more and we all want to achieve more. But when, when we, when you say that, or when, when you connect with that, um, you know, can you walk our listeners or just, just help me understand some of the things, some of the, maybe the pro, productivity hacks that you know 
that our listeners can possibly either take action on or really focus and hone in on so they can actually do less dreaming and start doing more, right? And taking action. Yeah. So that's my, that's my motto, my little tagline on my podcast, less dreaming, more doing. So many people, they have analysis paralysis, right? There's shiny object syndrome. There's too many things you could do. I could do wholesaling in real estate or I could flip houses or I could get rental yes. properties. And that's just real estate. Imagine digital marketing, creating sales funnels, right? Facebook ads, YouTube ads. It's like, if you think of all the things that you could possibly do, you'd probably be too afraid to take action, do any of it. And some people do it all, but they started off with one or two things and they get those down and they automate it, right? So um, in terms of like less dreaming, more doing, I love to tell people, like, first you got to find out what you want, right? I don't know if we talked about this on my show, but like, or when I was on your show, but my younger brother kind of quit his job after three years. He's seeing some of the commission checks and stuff I'm doing in real estate. And I'm like, not even working like crazy hard. Um, he's like, man, you just deposited like 20 grand and like, you were on vacation for like two weeks. Like, what the hell? <laughs> like, I want to do that. And so I'm not sure if he really wants to do real estate or if he likes the idea. Right. So my advice to him and to everyone listening is you got to get very clear. Like, what do you want? Right. I mean, I got into real estate because I knew I wanted to be involved and plugged in. And I'm here now, like I'm working a lot with clients buying and selling houses, but I'm still kind of getting clarity. Like, do I want to go more towards the investor side of becoming an investor and like flipping houses and in doing that and refer out my clients in the future? Or do I want to kind of have a little bit of both, right? So you got to get very clear. But once you do that, it's amazing what happens when you get clear and you journal things down or at least brainstorm exactly. through these kinds of conversations, man. Because I'm starting to find out, you know, I know what I like about the business. I know what I don't like. Yep. And I delegate all the stuff that I either don't like to do or that I'm not good at so that I can focus solely on the stuff that I love to do. Like, how do I do more of what I love? And the stuff that I don't love that I have to do or that has to get done, I don't have to personally do, right? So now it's just cool. 100%. I'm doing Zoom calls, connecting with people, lunches, coffees. Yeah, um, the fun stuff. Clubhouse rooms, the fun stuff. Like, I love this. It doesn't feel like work. And then for the stuff like, ah, oh, this person wants to go see six houses, I can pay someone to go show those houses. And when they're ready to write the offer, I have someone else that I pay to write the write the documents. I'm like... I'm just the the pretty face <laughs> or the radio face, I guess, that yeah, is the yeah, joke, yeah. <laughs> right? I'm just the customer facing person who talks to the clients. I get yeah. the I get them willing to work with me. And then I think we talked about this on your show too, is that you have systems and team members and people who can help you execute on all that stuff. So you, you aren't doing everything all on your own, exactly. right? So when you build a business like that, man, it's so exciting because I, I literally... I, I was joking with like a neighbor, like I could retire right now for the rest of the year. Cause like I have solid income still coming in deals closing. Right. And I'm just kind of like checking in once or twice a week. Like, Hey, how's this going? Any issues? No. Okay, good. That's closing next week. How about that one? Closing in two weeks. Great. Yeah. And it's just aut autopilot almost more or less. You gotta, nothing's truly passive. You have yeah, to yeah, put yeah. in a lot of time, but um, for those who are stuck, you know, just start writing down journal. Like, what do you want? What's your perfect day look like? What, right. what are the steps you have to take today in order to get there? Because if you don't know, then you're just going to keep waking up, going through the motions every day because you don't have a plan. Yeah. And, and I love that you said that because like you actually practice what you preach, man. Because I mean, I'm following you on the socials, right? After your after your podcast, we linked up, right? And so I see you, you're, 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 on, you're on social media and you're constantly posting stories, but you're not just randomly posting shit, right? You're posting stuff that has meaning behind it. You're posting, you're checking in about your, your workouts, right? You can tell that you have a routine. You can tell that you're actually, you do write stuff down and you're still figuring out what you want. Same thing. We, it has to yeah. be a continual process. Exactly. I think, I think again, if we just say, okay, these 10 things on my list, it's all I'm going to focus on. And as long as I hit all 10 things, those things, I'm going to be content with the rest of my life. But dude, you don't realize if you start like focusing on those goals and then you start hitting them, how fast that check, that 10, person or 10 thing checklist is about to go. And then now you're like, oh, hell, what do I do next? Because <laughs> you just checked all 10 things off within the first six months and you thought this was a, a lifetime thing, you know? Yeah. And so you have yeah. to continuously write that stuff down. Like, does this make me happy? Asking yourself the hard questions. Am I stressed out? It, what I do right now, I'm working 60 hours a week, working 75 hours a week, whatever it is. And if that's wearing you down, because Hours and time take a toll on the body. 
the longer do. you work, the longer you're trying to focus in and hone on things. And yes, you know, entrepreneurship and, and getting to where you want takes some sacrifice. But when you have a goal and you also have a way as far as delegations concerned, which you just mentioned, doing this stuff and focusing on, and I want everybody that's listening to, to listen to what he said, right? And, and I've said it on several different episodes, me and Andrew is like, focus on your strengths, focus on what you love to do, focus on what you know you're good at. I'm not saying don't learn the things that you're weak in. And if it's something you truly want to get better in, do it. Yeah. But don't sit there and, and waste time because like time's not something you're going to get back, man. And so if, if it's something that you hate, that you dread, that you're like, man, I love this business, but I'm spending 75% of doing the things that I don't like, outsource that stuff. Exactly. Find somebody that likes doing it. And if they're just doing it for the money, who cares? Let them ha- let them put that stress on themselves while you can be free to do the good stuff, right? And the stuff that gets you pumped, going to drink lattes and sitting down and, and having a drink with the client or talking to them and just like, again, being the face behind what you're building. It's not like, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm building this thing and I'm going to continuously hide, but it's being the forefront of, hey, this is what I'm building. And the clients don't have to know that you're not doing everything, right? I mean, they at the end of the day, as long as they, they think you're Superman or Superwoman, you're good That's to go, that bro. Matters, That's all that matters, exactly. right? Exactly. And everything's coming down. I mean, more or less, I think things are becoming more of a personal brand in general. I mean, there's the big For companies, sure. right? There's Apple and stuff. You see the commercials and there's no, you can't see the CEO or any of the top players. Right. Or Steve Jobs isn't popping up in commercials or anything, right? But so many things like Russell Brunson with ClickFunnels or like Tony Robbins with his uh, his uh, mastery, like weekend events and live seminars. I think they're all virtual yep. now, right? Um, those types of things, you associate that person with the business. And so I think that's becoming more and more important to an extent, right? Like, you you know, McPherson Marketing Group, for example, like yeah. that's your brand. That's your personal brand. Your name's on the line. Um, and people like that. Like when they see you, they don't care about Chris Bello real estate. They want Chris Bello. Like they want, Exactly. They like the idea. They want to help me and support me for the value that I've put out through podcasts and free content and, and things like that and helping other clients out. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be me doing everything. Right. But as long as I'm the one who, you know, has my name on it and is blessing the final decisions and making sure that they're well taken care of, um, that's what people care about. So for those listening as well, I mean, really understanding that your name and your brand, that's you. Like that, yeah. your reputation is on the line and that helps you show up in a way that you might not if you were hiding behind a brand that had no name or face to it. Right. For sure. And, and I mean, like you just said, I mean, the personal branding is getting more popular. Like not everybody's going to be Coke. Not everybody's going to be Chick-fil-A. Right. right. Not everybody's going to be the next whatever. But if you could break it down to personal branding and then and then again, give that free value. Continue to add stuff to what you're doing. And then you're like, oh, by the way, right? McPherson Marketing Group's here or Chris Bello. Like you're, you're building your chrisbello.com, right? But then yeah. you have your Chris Bello real estate because nobody really cares. Like if you, if you, if you open the door and it's all about you trying to gain a sale right off the bat, man, people are numb to that shit now, right? They nobody are. wants to hear that. Nobody wants like, I get so aggravated because my mind shift has so I've is totally shifted. Anytime I go somewhere, whether it's furniture shopping, which I did with this weekend with my <laughs> wife, like Ooh. you go, we went to Pottery Barn, and then so they're all like, I don't know if they work off a of commission because I don't know how they work, but they're, they're attacked they're like sharks, you, right? Man. Yeah, exactly. They're sharks, and they're just like they're they're sitting there. They the blood just dripped into the water because you walked <laughs> into their store, and now they're like, "Can I help you?" And the same person will ask you that 35 times before you leave. I'm the guy you ask me once or twice and I say, I'm good. Now, hey, if I'm making a decision in my head and, I've, and I have a couple questions, yes, that's when I'll bring you in. Right? right. But at least don't come over here and try to sell me on something I'm just looking at because I might even like the material, but I'm, I might like the color. And now you're trying to sell me that. And I'm like, OK, I'm out. Exactly. So it's like we're like my thing is is. I don't like that whole thing. Right. And so same thing with car salesmen. You go look at a vehicle they want to sell. Jeez. Boom, boom, boom. And you're just like, get out of here, bro. And that's, I know if I'm feeling like that, there's so many other people in this world feeling the same way. 
And people um, don't get it, man. They still do that. Exactly. Real estate agents too. Like I see all, I went to the trainings and stuff when I got my license and the first thing they show you in the training is how to export all the contacts in your phone and upload them to your database so you can call them all. I'm like, man, you know, my millennial <laughs> friends and I, we don't call nobody, right? Nah, we, we're texting, <laughs> doing voice messages, maybe like a video, like through Facebook. Right. And, and just, they don't understand. Cause like they're teaching me to call people and like, they would literally put you on the spot in the, in that course. Like, okay, we're going to do a 30 minute call session, use your scripts. Like, Oh, Hey, I wanted to share the exciting exactly. news that I'm a real estate agent. I'm like, this, this is corny as hell. I'm not doing it. I like called my mom and I was like, they're freaking making us call people. This is stupid. Right. And you know, fast forward a couple of years and I'm like one of the top, I'm a top 20% um, agent at that broker. There's like 730 agents and most of them have not made it because they were trying those old school outdated methods that just exactly. make people feel awkward. Whereas you and I, with our platforms, man, we're adding value. We're making videos. We're doing right. live videos. We're not even barely making a pitch half the time. I'm like, Hey, look, if you want to work with me, sh shoot me a DM. If not cool, I don't mind. Yeah. And do the number of clients that reach out, they want to work with you. They know they're not going to get your pitch Pressure. forced down their throat. Right. Exactly. It's such a different game. It is man. And, and I think thinking I was watching, it was funny because I, I I watched the videos on social media the other day and watching like Grant Cardone. One of these guys was like, can I role play with you real quick? And he's like, okay. And then, so they did it and he was just shutting them down. But see, this is, this is what happens, right? Because there's so many things like when you got click funnels, right? They have some kind of something called like funnel scripts or something. And then they had, and there, there's all these scripts that are readily available. And all these businesses think that the script is what they need to go by. It's the Bible. Dude, it's a template. It's a starting yes. point. It's something that you have to make your own because people, when I'm on the phone with somebody, man, I, I, I don't know. I can't remember the organization that keeps calling me because I, I will name drop them quick if I could remember <laughs> because it's aggravating, but they call me. No, actually it's Chevrolet, right? Because I own a Chevy truck. They call me once a week, brother, and they man. read the same script and I keep telling them no and please remove me from this list. They never do. They just are going to continue to hit me. They always want me to like, hey, we're going to give you 20,000 off your sale, right? Like all kinds of crazy garbage. Man, like care. I'm like, I'll call you when I'm ready, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I'm like, why are you doing this? That's because now sense. I never want to buy a Chevrolet again because I've been a Chevy <laughs> dude. And now it's like, bro, if you only knew you're never getting a sale from me again, the life of this truck is all I'm going to get, right? Yep. Like I'm on free oil changes for life and all that stuff through them. <laughs> so it's like, I'm not paying you any more money. And if I do, I'm just going to get rid of the truck. Like, cause yeah. that's, that's my mind shift. Cause it's like, you're just trying Turns to you get off. another vehicle, bro. Like you, you're not calling me just to ask me how my truck's doing. Like approach it differently. Don't keep calling me with somebody else every time and reading verbatim the same. Script. What is on your script, bro? Like yeah. you're not helping build a relationship right there. You're just pissing me off. Right. Exactly. Like, build the relationship up front. Like, Hey, Clint, just wanted to call you, man. I know that you have this 2019 Chevrolet truck, um, you know, and I was just wanted to check on, you know, I know that you came for oil change and just say, hey, man, how's everything going? Right. Like personalize that shit. Don't sit there yeah. and say, hey, I noticed me, me and my manager just noticed that blah, 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 blah. And, and I'm like, bro, like you're the 20th person within the last 20 weeks that called me with the same exact script verbatim. The only thing that was different was the name that you used because you're a different person. And I yep. was like, so when, when I say no to you, your, it goes to your boss else. just passes it down. I'm like, bro, this is garbage. And I was like, if you, yeah. if I did that in my marketing agency, I would be embarrassed. Like I would not even expect you to do business with me because right. I don't think this day and age, that's how it should be done. My man. It's frustrating, man. I can, I can name drop one company that does that for anyone who's in real estate. If you're an agent, for example, and you sell a house or you help someone buy a house, like the jokes are in the Facebook groups too. Like, Hi, this is ADT trying to reach you. You know, like the, the home security, you literally get the same call. Like, Hey, you know, congrats on closing this house. I wanted to see if your clients were interested in the security system. I can give you 200 bucks. I'm like, my man, I just made 10 grand on this house. 200 bucks is like nothing. Um, right. let alone, I'm not going to give you my clients info to bug them. And no, nah, man, it's a different rep, same pitch. Man. It's so frustrating. I'm like, I'm never, I'm going to tell my clients to just get a ring doorbell and they're good. They yeah, don't bro. need all this fancy systems <laughs> and stuff, right? Especially if you're going to get hounded and it's a different number each time. I've blocked like 20 of the numbers. It's always a new one. Yeah, man. Right. So it's, it's pissed me off enough where I'm like, I'm never going to recommend ADT to any of my clients. Right. I mean, and typically I'm the man that's like, Hey, 
everybody it's a fair game across the board right like the security system is really on you what what you value but right. bro like and same thing with a vehicle what you value i'm like nah man i don't roll like this and so like again my whole mind shift on, on my truck and in the company i just mentioned i'm just like i don't think i could ever actually bring myself together again and just be like i don't think you deserve my business i don't think you deserve yeah. the check or the money that you're making off of me because of this garbage right here. And I, I always tell people as well, like I'll give them advice, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll be on the phone with the sales rep and I just want to see what they say. And some of them are pretty friendly and they like joke. And one guy, I, you could tell they were in the Philippines or whatever, like you can hear it's a call center. And he's like, you know, sir, like it will really hurt my feelings if you hang up on me. And I'm like, <laughs> oh man, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Like, okay, what's up? And we talked for a couple of minutes and then I was like, all right, man, I'm not interested in the solar panels or whatever. Like I really right. got to go. I'm sorry to hurt your feelings, but like, I'm going to hang up now. And then I yeah. hung up. Um, but it's just, I'm sure that it works at some extent. For sure. And even when I got into real estate, cold calling is something that a lot of people do. You know, they'll call lists exactly. to find motivated homeowners that want to sell. It works, but it doesn't feel good for me. And it's a numbers game. I don't feel like getting 500 nah. FUs to get one deal. I'd rather post 500 videos to get, you know, 10 deals and referrals and repeat clients, right? Right. right. I mean, word of mouth is so strong now, though. Like you get the, yeah. the 500 FUs and you're get, waiting to get that one sale. But that the other people in that area that gave you the FU, they're sitting there talking about you possibly and talking that about their, their, work with their you. bad experience. Right. Yeah. And so that could multiply just from that 500 to if, even if that went to their significant other. Right. And then they get a divorce or whatever happens. Whoa, but they're like, right. oh, dude, I'm not messing with that dude, Chris Bello or exactly. whatever, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the thing. It's like. Didn't and even think about that, man. Like the negative repercussions of, exactly. of that kind of activity. It's, it's terrible. And so that you got to be careful. And I think, again, as long as we're focused on the value add that we bring to a situation and educating the clients, right? That's yep. really all we, that's all you should be doing. Educating. And, and that's not being pushy. That's not being an ass. That's just educating the client because you can't fault somebody not knowing what they don't know. And, and I really tell people and I tell my clients too, when I'm doing business and, and there's so many digital marketing services out there that look, nothing, it's really, you really have no dumb questions. Can you Google what you're about to ask me? Yes, I'm sure you could. Right. But I want to educate you because if I just say, go Google it, brother, how much credibility am I going to lose? Right. I'm not educating right. anymore. I'm just <laughs> telling them something they already know, but they want to make sure it, it's almost like a, a, a valid, a validly check or however you say that word, right? Like, hey, Vali I'm going to make validity. sure. This guy, I was like, yeah, there, validity. <laughs> validity, validity, my bad, check. man. You got that it. That is a confusing got word. Me. I was like, wait a second. I think there's an extra syllable that you added. <laughs> no, you, you're, the, you're the man. I, I know I know. I added so many syllables just then, <laughs> but but I'm a guy that does not care, right? So That's true, man. You just say it and like, I, I'm the same way. I'm like, wait, wait, what does that word mean that you just yeah, used? Like, I, yeah. for the audience who doesn't know, but that is true, man. It's a validity check. They want to see, do exactly. you actually know it? Or are you trying to just pull pull the wool over my eyes? I love it, man. Because again, that that's one of those things. It's like they can check you real quick up front. And that person even might already know the answer, right? They already might because they've already been through so many digital marketing agencies or real estate agents that they know the answer to this question. But they they're really just, you do. it's just <laughs> like, hey, what what do you got for me? Let me see mm -hmm. your spin on this. True. And, and you, we might not even realize that. And so we might give them BS answer and they're like, all right, gotcha. Right. I'm out. They, you don't even know that you haven't heard from them again. You're just like, what happened? You're like, cause you're, you're shooting BS at, and people could smell it, bro. People exactly. could smell the script. They could smell the BS. So we got to be real. We got to educate and really hone in on that. Yeah. And just being authentic in general, people can tell. I mean, whenever exactly. you do a call with someone and you just add value for 30 minutes, like, I, a lot of us do free consultation call, strategy call type thing, right? Like I'll talk with clients constantly and I'm like, hey, look, I know your your wife's talking to a realtor. She kind of knows whatever, like you're talking to me. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah. No hard feelings. Like we all know a million people in real estate. Exactly. It has to be with who you vibe with. So I'm always, it's like a negotiating tactic almost where you're like, you let them know, you know, it's okay to not go with me. Like, I, that's fine. It's your choice. Right. And they like that more. It like attracts them to you even more where they're like, Hey, I, I want to go with you. You know, the other sure. person might have that commission breath. They're really trying to get this sale because they need to make that next payment on their house. And like, this is their only lead. That's a different conversation than here. I'll just give you 30 minutes of value. I'll answer all your questions. Yeah. Yes. You can go to any agent if you want, but like, 
this is all you need to know. Make sure that that person understands that as well. Right. No, I mean, I, I get it. And I think really how I can kind of spin that a little bit and, and how I can verbalize that in a different way is basically just leaving the ball in their court. Right. Exactly. You're dropping the information there. Hey, here's the ball. Right. You're not going to be kick, you're not going to be picked last at kickball because I'm giving you it. But hey, come around, circle choice. back your choice. Right. And so I really think people respond. And I, I remember when I started doing that. Like it just people respond to that so much better because they're like, oh, OK, well, he educated me or he 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 really gave me a lot of information. And all these other people are not giving me that much time um, or dedication. And and they're all pressuring me when this yeah. guy just said, hey, this is take it or leave it. You can do business with me or not. And do people respond to that and you'll start earning business just being authentic, like you said. Yeah. The example that I like to give people, I mean. I've been I've been with my girlfriend for like four almost four years, but before you know the dating game, when you had a girlfriend, like and other girls are like attracted to you, and like you're like what the hell? Like I'm not even trying to <laughs> like hit on these other girls, but right. it seems like it's so easy just to like get attraction from other people that you know are around you, and then as soon as you're single, you're like the creepy guy, like with your friend, like trying to look around, like hey, we should Bruh. go talk to those girls, right? <laughs> and it's just you're you're nervous, it's awkward, they reject you, it's just a terrible feeling. It's kind of like that with clients as well. For anyone who can relate to that example, I'm not sure if you can, but um, when you have a bunch of clients, like it's amazing because it attracts more clients, and they sure. want they want to work with you. You're more in demand. You have more confidence in yourself because like the checks are rolling in, the deals are closing. You don't need that next person necessarily. I mean, you want to help them if they're open to it, but they can sense that like you don't need them. And that make it it's so weird how that happens, you know? Like, because if you need them and you're like, hey, like, are you gonna make a decision on that? Do you want to purchase or are you gonna sign up for that plan that I'm offering? Yeah. They don't like that, just like you in the Chevy story. Like, dude, stop calling me 20 times. I already said no. Right. I'll call you. It, it, that's totally different because I know it takes like 21 touches or whatever marketing message, right? Yeah, yeah. But that's if they want to reach out to you. That's through posting and live videos and emails and sharing information. That's not 21 phone calls with the same pitch, you know? Exactly. That's, that's going to have a different effect. <laughs> no doubt. 100%, man. I, I, I really like that. And I think, man, at the end of the day, dude, look, we just want to add value, man. Right. We just want to educate and we just want to continue to build relationships yep. with people around us and grow from there. And I really think as long as we stay authentic and as long as we, you know, your eyes might be on a prize, but at the end of the day, man, people could smell the BS. And so as long as we take it, take the right approach and don't call somebody with the same script a million times, I think you'll be good. I agree. And now I'm starting to see one of my friends told me he was using this software that automatically messages people on Facebook and like, it's kind of a custom message where it drops their first name in there. But I've seen a couple of hints now where people message me and they might send a voice message to make it more personalized. And I'm like, no, thank you. I'm busy. Like I'm doing real estate. I'm not interested in this other business opportunity or whatever they're pitching. And then like they acknowledge and they're like, okay, no worries. And then I get like the same message, like, Hey, you know, (laughs) hadn't heard back. I'm like, okay, they're using this automated thing. now. I, I can tell. And it's definitely a no. And maybe I might even mute their notifications. Right. So like one guy the other day, I, I started getting a text. It was like a motivational morning text. And I was like, yeah, yeah. oh, thank you. I replied to the first one. But then I got one like three days in a row, like, you know, make it a great day. And like, it's it's great <laughs> to be positive. I was just like, all right, I got to mute this because I, I've turned off so many notifications on my phone to stay focused. For that sure. while I appreciate a positive message, it's like I, I, I can't take two seconds here and there because it adds up. And like you mentioned earlier, man, time is limited. We can always delegate stuff and outsource stuff and, yeah. you know, pay other people to do stuff, but you'll never get the time back that you are investing in certain things. So I'm very cautious with my time. You oh, know, man. like I, I cut out distractions. I, I say Love no it. a lot and it feels great whenever, you, whenever you know what your goals are, it's easier to say yes or no, because those things either fit or they don't. Yeah. And I mean, how much time do we waste? Like, again being distracted throughout the day, whether it's in e- like emails. No, we have to have blocks of time and really have to be for, for being productive when it comes to productivity. You got to really have a method for how you do that stuff. Because if you're anybody like me, man, <laughs> I have an email list or not, not just an email list, but people are emailing me because I'm on so many email lists that if I sat there and just responded or did anything via my phone, via email the whole entire day, I wouldn't get any work done. Because it's con- constant, 
I mean, I can within a matter of months, dude, I have seven, 10,000 emails, right? And it's just like, if you don't go in there and like unfollow or unsubscribe to all these things, like you're just going to get bar- bombarded. But you also, it's also putting a burden on you because you feel like you have to respond or feel like you have to read it. And it's like, look, if you're going to do emails, make sure it's client related. So you can just sit there and focus, right? Focus for an hour of responding to emails and just take that time and make it happen. And then turn all your notifications off because if you're like on Clubhouse, bro, For sure. they just bow, bow, bow. I've never bow. seen that many notifications in my life. <laughs> Clubhouse is just <laughs> killing it. It's like everybody's starting a room. Everybody's following everybody. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I have to turn this thing off because it is overwhelming. But yeah. it, you can get stuck into that, right? It's making you pick up your phone. Every notification makes you pick up your phone and it will distract you from accomplishing that specific task that you're thinking about right then. And you're thinking about it because you have to do it, right? So notifications, man, I love that you brought that up because that's a productivity hack that is definitely something that like you have to hone in on for sure. Yeah, that's one that I'd love the audience to take away because I mean, we've all heard it before. Yeah, put your phone notifications off, blah, blah, blah. Like you never really do. I think I heard it a year or two ago and it wasn't until I was waiting for, you know, my flight back to Houston for my most recent trip to Colorado. like. I had a couple hours to kill and literally it was just waiting for the, for the flight. We, right. I popped into a WeWork with my girlfriend and we like literally were there for four hours, just hanging out, killing time, waiting for the flight. And I'm like, you know, this is a great time to actually do that. And I have a, an iPhone, you know, you can do this in any, any phone, but I literally went through every app and I was like intentional. I reorganized my whole home screen to have only the apps that I use the most. Right. And I turn off everything, man. The only noise that I hear is a text message and a phone call. And I, I kind of, pl- I turned off the text, but then I found like, oh crap, my client texted me three hours ago and I didn't <laughs> reply. So that's ur- that's more urgent for me because yeah. in real estate, people are either texting you or calling you. Sure. But man, I turn off the sounds. I turn off the little things that drop down and show you the banner at the top of your screen. I don't have it show up on my lock screen. Cause like you said, if, if my phone's lighting up here, clubhouse room, this person texted me, that yep. event's coming up, man. Someone who texted me on Snapchat, like I barely even use that anymore. I'm like, <laughs> man, right. you can't get away from it. And it's so distracting. I, I even turned off the um, the bubbles. So I don't know how many unread emails I have. I don't know how many messages I have on Facebook. But when I log in on my computer or on my app, you know, when I have a, a little bit of time to kill, I can reply to all those things that are not urgent, right? Yeah. If someone liked my comment or liked a video on Facebook. I don't need to know that right when it happens. Oh, for sure, man. I, I love, I love that hack, man. Because again, guys, you have to do that. Like if you're trying to get something done, if you're an entrepreneur or, or, and you have the time to kill like that, great. But man, I don't think you're going to get anything done again because this thing right here, this device, bro, the distraction device. <laughs> oh, straight up. That's all they're trying to do. They're trying to suck you in some way. That email that just came through that text message that, I mean, look, when you're, when your whole business is reliant on communication, right? So you have to keep. The, the phone open. You have to keep text open. And I totally understand that. I agree because it's something that if I did that, right, my my wife, I'm married. She might call me or something important or something might happen to my little kid at daycare, right? I have know. to be available for that stuff right. and I have to be able to react. So if yep. I turn that off, like I'm like, oh, my bad, because you know, I've done that before where my phone goes into silent mode at a certain time at night. I wake up and then I forgot, forgot to turn the volume back up and I've missed like 15 right. calls and some of them are important calls and i'm like oh can't do that no yeah, more. Can't yeah do you that. gotta double check too because i mean um there, there you can do anything you want with your phone right like I, I did this as well i put my phone on that automatically goes to do not disturb yep and so i keep the volume on but then i have it on favorites where if a client calls me at 10 p.m i don't want them to be able to call me i want only like my my family my parents my brothers like and my girlfriend, right. like and one exactly. best friend, that, that childhood best friend that I did the magic right. shows with. I'm like, all right, he makes the favorites list. Like <laughs> if he calls me and he needs something, like I'll be there, you know, to help him out. Exactly. But all my other friends is like, dude, send me a text or I'll get back to you in the morning. <laughs> Sorry. Right. I think that's how we all are, man. You know, at the end of yeah. the day, especially your sanity, you, especially, yeah, the grind, whatever you're going through on a daily basis, you have to kind of separate yourself from that. Yeah, man. And people don't get it, right? Like if you have a nine to five job, like usually unless you have a side business, if you're listening to this, I'm assuming you're either an entrepreneur or you want to be one, but a lot of people who are just nine to five employees, they don't get it. They're like, dude, you're off. Like why, you know, isn't it at six o'clock? Like, aren't you done? I'm like, no, you're never done. And 
you're always distracted. There's always something else you could be doing, but your entrepreneur friends, like we would get it, right? We know that sure. entrepreneur life, like you're never off. There's always another idea. There's always a thing you can do to improve your email engagement or, you know, oh, I should use Calendly for booking and stuff, right? So mm-hmm. we have One- to set the lines and the boundaries for ourselves, but also for others. 100%, man. Couldn't agree. Couldn't agree more. Um, and so, man, let, let's talk about like through your entire entrepreneurial journey or just your journey in general. Right. Because, I mean, I think you're still trying to dial um, everything that you're doing in right now and you're still trying yeah. to really focus in and hone in on what really makes Chris Bello tick at the end of the day. Right. Like what what you can be something that you're going to be happy with for the rest of your life and real estate might not be it. Right. But it might. Um, and so through your entire journey up up until now. From all the highs and lows you've experienced in your life, um, what has been the most difficult thing for you, man, to get to where you've been to basically where you are today? Man, I'd say I, I always tell people like I, I'm very fortunate. I don't think I have any childhood trauma or anything like my parents are still alive. They're still together. Yeah. Um, had a great, you know, great childhood. Never got all the toys that I wanted, but like I got toys every Christmas, you know, right. that kind of thing. So I know like I'm grateful that I had a very great life. Like I never struggled for stuff. I went to private school, like Catholic school and like private high school. Um, so I know that automatically puts me in a place where like, I haven't had a lot of the hardships that many people may be listening to this have. Yeah. So with that said, I'd say maybe the hardest thing for me. And again, I know people who've gone through like, Oh, my parents were divorced. And like, I was almost homeless and right. like, my story is not that difficult. And I acknowledge that. And so I can't relate to it. Although I do sympathize for those um, who had very, difficult childhoods and things like that. But um, for me, I'd say the hardest thing is, and Gary V talks about this, right? Like the rich people, the the poor people, like a lot of poor people have a chip on their shoulder. Like, man, I had it hard. I never had anyone supporting me. But then wealthy people, um, they also have it hard in a way where they're complaining. Like I never had drive. I was never motivated. Like I never had to work. Right. I think Ed Milet has mentioned this as well for anyone listening. I love his stuff where he said the hardest place to be is like average because it's pretty good, right? (laughs) Like you don't want to really, you don't have to do very much if you don't have to. So that's been my constant struggle is like, how do I put my back against the wall, light a fire under my ass, like motivate myself? Because deep down, I know my backup plan. If everything goes to hell, my parents love me. They would let me live there till I was 50. You know, like I could go go move back in and that would be great. So I'd say like the hardest thing, and that's something that I'm constantly working on is how do I think of that scenario in my mind? Like I have to do this. I have to be successful. It is my responsibility. Um, Success is my duty, responsibility, and obligation. I think that's a Grant Cardone poster. Love it. Um, Yeah. How do I fuel that, man? That's, that's my, that's a challenge that I still struggle with because I'm like, okay, now I'm making pretty good checks and I'm not even having to work super hard. Right. Right. Why should I push harder? Like, why don't I just coast? I have to fight that voice in my mind. And if anyone can relate here, man, I don't know if you can too. Like I want to work hard. I want to grind, but then I'm like, well, I kind of want to chill. Like how do I just chill and then make more money and not, and not work that hard, you know? Right. Does that Uh, make sense? I mean, it's it's a weird problem. It it (laughs) makes complete sense, man. Because again, if, if the money starts coming in and you're like, dude, I'm not even having to push for this. Right. Because I've set things up to where it's like, I'm content with it like this, but it's also, realizing that that can go away right like if you just stop doing right. anything like dude it can go away so all the hard work and dedication that you've actually put into giving yourself that buffer of of feeling chill and feeling kickback and content like again complacent right I'll, the word complacent comes in your mind you start getting complacent about things mm-hmm. and i really am a firm believer of the law of attraction right and, and Me too. things happen for a reason and so if you just sit back and coast, brother, you know, I, and, and I'm not saying you're not doing that now, but I'm not. Uh, I, if you do that for the rest of your life, it's going to be bad. Things, the game's <laughs> going to change quick yeah. and you're going to be like, oh, man, like what happened? Yep. It's almost like technology. Technology changes on a daily basis. Um, it's true. Th- tactics and, and things, to ha- you know, change. So you got to approach things differently. But at the same time, man, when you have something figured out, I would just say, you know, just plan to get 1% better every day. That's it, it, man. Like when you think of it like that, like people really think that they got to be 100% good at something. 
Like I have to learn tonight how to build a website or put SEO on my website or figure out the search engines and, and, and rank in number one on Google and everything. Like, nah, man, learn it and just become 1% better each time. Add a piece of content, add a blog article baby steps. Do not try to do everything all at once because that's the quickest way to burn the house down, man. It It is. And for for you to feel that burnout. And and so don't try to do everything at once. And again, like learn along the way, never let your your education fail. Right. Because again, if we, if I want to learn real estate, bro, I'm pretty sure I can jump on YouTube. And if I'm listening to the right people, I can, I can make it a lucrative business for myself, right? Like right. I'm listening to the right people. I'm focusing on the right things. And now I have a set structured way I do things because this dude on a YouTube video told me how to do it and it's working, right? And like, you're going to find that person or the people that you can relate to. So it's just one of those things, man. Don't let complacency set in because that can really sneak up and bite you, man. For sure. There's a, there's a book, I think it's called Good to Great. And I'm pretty sure it's in that book that the author has a quote that says, good is the enemy of great. Mm. That kind of goes back to what I was saying before. It's like, if you have it pretty good and you're, you know, I had a pretty good oil and gas job. That's why I wanted to get uncomfortable. I quit literally right. no benefits or anything, man. It just like the paycheck stopped and mm. that was it. I put my back against the wall and then it, it fueled me in a way to, okay, crap, my savings are dropping. I need to actually do something because if I had stayed there, I know I would have been so comfortable that when I got home at 5 30 PM, and I was getting paid that day, like a three thousand dollar, you know, paycheck. Like, oh, I don't really have to do this website, you know. Like, right. I'm good. And so I had to put my back against the wall. And I don't always recommend that for people. Like, if I had to do it again, I probably would have bought investment properties a lot yeah. more before I quit my job because it got harder to do after I quit my job because I'm like, well, I don't have any money coming in. Exactly. Like, I'm not lendable. Um, that kind of thing. So definitely just. Focusing on getting a little better every day. I love that. It sounds more manageable than trying to change the world overnight because because nothing like that happens overnight. It is a 20 year success, right? It is for sure. Jeff so Bezos Chris, man, and Amazon, man, that, that didn't happen overnight. Oh, no, not at all, man. You can see <laughs> you can see the progression there. And now it's like yep. just a monster you can't contain or, yep. or, or battle. Right. I mean, they're going to eat your <laughs> lunch every day. So, man, as we wrap up this episode, because, dude, I can talk to you forever, man. I really think Dang. like. I really think we could just go at it and and just continue to extract golden nuggets and information out of each other. But as we wrap up this episode, my man, if you can leave our listeners with one piece of advice and it's something you might have already said, um, what would it be? Man, I'd say that clarity. I've been just for like a year now. That's been my word is just get clear. What do you want? Write it down. Do you want to be a real estate investor? Do you want to be a digital marketer? Yeah. How many clients do you want to have? What do you want to sell? Like, what's your offer? Like, write down. I love the exercise of the perfect day exercise. Write down like a full page in a journal, like pen and paper. Don't just type it because then you're not as intentional. What do you truly want? I didn't realize that like, this isn't even what I want to do. Like, what am I doing? This doesn't excite me. So if you can get clear on what you want and then you just break it down, what are the, what are the one or two steps I need to take next? to get there. Don't write down all 50. There's going to be a lot of steps along the way. Just like you said, baby steps, 1% better every day, write down one or two things you can do today. That'll get you closer to your goals. And you keep doing that one year, two years later, it's going to look a lot different than if you had never taken this activity and taken the time to jot those things down. 100% man. I, I really, I'm a firm believer. And like you just said, you know, having that clear clarity and making sure that you just aim to get better. Just, just every just day, little by little, man, and you'll get there. Yep. So I think that's a wrap for this episode, my man. Chris, I want to thank you for, it. for for being on the episode and, and thank you for being a part of that entrepreneur life and, and helping us add value in what we're doing on our show, my man. Thank you. I appreciate it, Clay. It's been great talking with you here today. All right. Thank you. Thank you all so much for listening to that entrepreneur life to learn more about what Chris is working on. Check out chrisbello.com, guys. That is chrisbello.com. If you like what you heard today, please subscribe to our podcast and don't forget to download our free ebook at thatentrepreneurlife.com. And if you're interested in having us do some mini masterclasses and we might be able to do something with Chris at a later date, um, just let us know through our website. Thanks for continuing to support what we do as entrepreneurs. And don't forget to join us next week for another episode of That Entrepreneur Life. Thanks for listening to That Entrepreneur Life podcast. 
Be sure to visit thatentrepreneurlife.com to join the conversation, access our show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode as we continue to add value. Until next time.